Now, this morning, as you know, is, uh, it's our Temple Street uh, special. But uh, as part of that, we're going to take a look now at how Christmas was celebrated at Temple Street Hospital a century ago, and indeed through the century, and how it has changed. Although the faces and the customs have changed, indeed, what does remain unaltered is the spirit of care, humanity, goodwill and hope that enables ordinary people to do extraordinary things for very sick children. Joining us now to tell us more is Temple Street Hospital historian Barry Kennerk and CEO of fundraising Denise Fitzgerald. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Um, Denise, I'm going to skip past you rudely if you don't mind and go to Barry first. Barry, Temple Street, everyone knows it's a very, very special place. Can you give yeah. us a little potted history of it and maybe even its origins? I think people will be interested to know how it came into being. Yeah. Well, Temple Street, uh, the current hospital opened in 1879 and I suppose almost from the beginning fundraising was an issue because the hospital depended on voluntary donations mm -hmm. and so Christmas and the way it's been celebrated has been integral to that from the from the start uh, when the sisters moved in they found within a couple of years that they had to expand the premises and they had to move into uh, the house next door so these were two old houses essentially two old city mansions that had been given up years before uh, big high ceilings you know old fireplaces not altogether suited to a hospital so they had to put a lot of money into trying to uh, turn it over for that purpose. Were those buildings donated to them or did they have to purchase them? Uh, they had to purchase them yeah yeah one of the buildings actually is interesting because it was the home of the Parnell family between 1862 and 1867. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so the Parnells had vacated only, uh, you know, a decade previously, and uh, and the sisters had a job of trying to convert that then as well. You know, so uh, now the, ba back in those days, obviously, uh, uh, it was British rule, mm. uh, right. and this was set up by an order of nuns, so it was effectively a Catholic hospital. Right? Uh, did they get much support from the state, such as it was? The, there was certainly support from the lady lieutenant. Uh, now, there is never mention of the Lord Lieutenant coming to the hospital, but the lady lieutenant and her uh, retinue at Christmas time would come in, and there were various donations made from time to time. Uh, to the hospital, but not officially. Uh, you know, mm. it didn't. It, it wasn't a state hospital like some hospitals in the city were. So it it, it, it really wouldn't is. have been a hospital for the privileged or the elite, would it? No, that that's the thing about Temple Street, the area that is situated in. Uh, there are uh, many records uh, or accounts in the archives of you know the children coming in being in very ragged condition and so on. Uh, the sisters would have to uh, basically take their clothes away on admission. And for that reason, donations of, of clothing w were particularly appreciated. Now, you mentioned the Lady Lieutenant, and one of the Christmas traditions was the Christmas, uh, the Christmas fete. That's that right. she would yeah. lead. Yeah. Now, describe that to us, because it's kind of beyond our understanding nowadays. Well, it, it, if you can imagine, it, as I said, the high ceilings in some of these rooms, you had a huge Christmas tree that formed the centrepiece of this. So the la Lady Lieutenant would come in. You'd have the police commissioners, the uh, Lord and Lady Mayoress and so on. And you had upwards of 500 people. But if you can imagine back then, there were only 60 or so inpatients. So they, they very much overwhelmed the hospital. And uh, they, they put presents on the tree and, and give them out. Sixpence uh, coins were given to the children. You can imagine they were all dressed up in little red velvet jackets and so on in bed. Very, very Victorian kind of scene. But by 1897, so many people were converging on the hospital every year that they had to really trim it back because, uh, as I said, the hospital was overwhelmed. Mm. So they, uh, thereafter, then they went for more modest. Um, uh, I suppose uh, affairs uh, with, with fewer people coming in. And is, is it true the Santa dressed in green rather yeah. than red? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Santa was green uh, back then. Yeah, yeah. Red only came was in. Was that a political statement? Stage. Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very nationalistic. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Denise, uh, I'm, talk to us about about fundraising for uh, for Temple Street. I, I mean, I. There are lots of very expert fundraisers in this country, but I don't know that there's a better oil machine than the one that operates out of uh, Temple Street. Right. That's a tribute to you and um, your redoubtable staff. We're an amazing team, and you know many of them. Angie, actually, and Angie who is a legend. And, uh, everywhere. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we I suppose we've been very lucky in that we get a huge amount of support from the public, and they're very good to us. A lot of people have been to <coughs> our doors, like 133,000 children every year come through our doors now. So people always want to give something back, and we've many families who come in. And I think I actually described it the other day. Sometimes it's the only thing you can actually control. You can't control a child's illness and what happens to them. We can actually give something back and. 
people love to mm. do that. It's kind of something that they can say thank you to the doctors, to the nurses and things like that. How much do you average in terms, I, I, I mean... We try to bring in maybe... I don't know if that's a fair you know, question. You're okay, we try to um, buy about five million euros worth of equipment and five different every worth. year, yeah. What percentage of the total running cost of the hotel of the hospital rather does that represent? Well, in terms of the hospital, they would have a, an operating budget of about eighty million a year. Eighty from million the a year. Okay. So most of that would go on the likes of costs for staff and things. So what we try to do is we try to do the added extras. So when a parent comes in, we want a house with Sherry Fitzgerald so that parents have somewhere to actually mm -hmm. stay overnight for a long period of time. So it's like a home from home, which is different things like that. They're the things that actually make a bit of a difference as a parent when you run through it. What's it been like in the last two years? It's been very challenging, I suppose, like every business out there. I mean, you know, uh, quite honestly, how much would you be down? We'd be down a little bit, but people are very generous. They're still trying. They're still giving us money, but maybe not. You know, maybe people might have been able to give us fifty euros. Maybe it's a fiver, mm. but people still are trying to do their best to help us. And that, that's kind of, I think that spirit hasn't died. And I think that's lovely. And a tribute to even all your viewers and everything. They've been amazingly supportive of the TV program, the documentary that we've shown by what it's actually like. For well, a in child. fairness to mm. both you, and I think I know it's your morning this morning here, but we also have to mention Crumlin because you're basically two sides of the same yeah. coin. We have never heard anybody ever make a complaint about either of those hospitals. True. And we've had a lot That's of people true, complaining yeah. about hospitals on this programme over the years and the service they've had. Never, never. ever not heard one. anybody, not one. Yeah. It, I think we all, the reason we're, we here, we're here is to help sick kids and I don't think no matter what, that's all we want. We want, actually want every child to go home healthy. And mm. you know, it's not always possible to do that, but we want to make whenever they come through our doors that it's an, it's an enjoyable experience as best we can. Because kids are so resilient. As a parent, not so. But mm. as children, you know, they're up there. They're you know, put it in. You know, get it over and done. But they're, they are they're amazing. So much, when you go in and meet the kids yeah. in there, it is mind blowing. Um, how incredible their spirit is something yeah. else. And Christmas, of course, as um, Barry's been telling us, was a very special time and has continued to be a very important time at Temple Street. So this Christmas, what's going on? Oh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be really <laughs> mad. We kind of, we talked, we lit some lights up in the front of the hospital just to kind of get just a Christmas some spirit. Just a few bits and pieces <laughs> to kind of really just get a Christmas spirit going. And for, when kids come in, then they see that it's not an imposing building. You know, it's not such a Could I just add thing. as well that next year is 100 years uh, of lights being used in Temple Street because they started to come in in the Edwardian period. So it'll be 100 years, 1912, yeah, was when they were first used. It's, it's altered somewhat, hasn't it? From its, from its origins. You'd be amazed, you know? <laughs> and you're always continuing to grow and change. And, and that's why you need to. funding. Exactly, we have to. So we wish you well. Thank you very much yes. indeed. I don't know whether you're going to hot foot it back up now because um, um, you are. there's lots of celebrations. There are special actually. guests turning up there this morning. Can we say who the special guests no, are? No, I don't, don't okay, do okay, it. Okay, we won't do the surprise. <laughs> They're very special, though. There are, and they will add to the mayhem. Literally. Yes, sorry, Denise, um, thank you both very much. It's a very happy Christmas to you. After the break, uh, we will be going back uh, to Temple Street to chat to some of Ireland's sporting heroes, Dublin football manager Pat Gilroy and some of his key players, and indeed the European cross-country champion, Fanula Britain, will be there as well.